Okay, here we are. Hi, everyone. Is anyone here? Can you guys hear me? Let me just grab my computer just one second because I'm going to um, this way be able to read the comments a little bit better. So I see we have six likes, 12 people. Hello, hello, everyone. One second. Okay, I'm back with my computer, and let's see. Because I don't see the comments here, I don't know why. Oh, Tanya is here. Okay, thank you so much for making a comment. Okay, Laura's here, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. 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 Here we go. Ah. Blue Cocotte is here. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for joining everyone so uh i wanted to show you what i received so i received this beautiful bag with all these goodies and i'll go through all of them and i'll be doing my manicure so in the meantime i'll be answering your questions this is really handy okay So first, I'm going to be using a file, 240-180. Yes, manicure time, finally. Then a buffer block. Then a pusher. These are plastic, but almost like a rubberized. Have you seen the video that I, uh, that I quickly posted? Okay, so these ones are like, they're like a soft plastic. So I'll be using one of them. And there was another manicure tool that I'm going to try that I received as well. And it's good because this one is not too, too sharp. Because with the sharp ones, you can really do a lot of damage. So this product is a cuticle remover. So it's like a gel. So it has glycerin, potassium hydroxide. Awesome. So very, very simple. And then the oil as well. It's a uh, sweet almond oil. Yes, yeah, sweet almond oil. And also it has um, coconut oil and some other oils. And then these two, I read up on it. These are like, like a one coat polishes, right? So you can use them as instead of the clear coat that I normally use. One is more pink and one is more beige, but this one is not too, too yellow. Yeah. So I think I'll be using this one. They actually have nice brushes. Yeah, this is very French, very chic. Okay, so. Let's start and see if there was any comments. Yes, we're operating without supervision today. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to start. And I'm just wondering if I'm not, I'm going to move this whole thing because, you know, I usually work over my lap. So I'm going to move everything. I'm going to put this towel over my lap. And you'll see how I see all the cables but it is what it is i'm gonna move this down a little bit joe says good evening everyone all right perfect this works so i'm going to show you how i am going to shape the nails but first i'll show you something interesting so remember how i had the acrylic on my nails and this and i just buffed the surface so i didn't overdo it I didn't overbuff nothing, but, and then I wore gel, 
and this nail got some damage. So sometimes the nail breaks here because it's either too hard or it's too flimsy or it's too damaged. And in this area, this nail is damaged. So I made it really, really short and it's going to obviously, you know, regrow eventually. Okay, I'm not used to these shapes. So this is 240, 180 grits. I'm gonna use probably the 180 because I don't mind. And this nail I'm keeping very short because I don't want it to break. And this is what I recommend. When you have damaged nails, don't try to grow them. Just shorten them as much as you can uh, because that way you won't be putting a lot of pressure on the nails. Let's see, you know what? I can't really see the comments too much. Okay. So I'm going to shorten the nails. And by the way, I still get a lot of questions. People are asking me if it's okay to, to file back and forth and absolutely it's okay. And you know, sometimes when you file back and forth, you'll see that, or you'll feel that the edge is not very nice. Okay. Which is very, very okay. Because then you can grab a buffer block and you can just go like this, hug the nail and the nail is perfectly, perfectly smooth. So this is what I do. Okay, so the shape is good. Hmm, how do I read the comments? I'm missing the comments. So I do my manicure once a week and it's a very simple manicure. It's a very quick manicure. So it doesn't take a lot of time because once when you keep on top of things, uh, it's not going to take too long. And then it's just very, very easy to do this this routine. And then on a daily basis, usually every couple of days or every day, I just push back the, the living skin and you can use this thing. Every nail uh, has its own personal shape. Yeah, because you know what? Um, I don't know. Uh, each nail bed has a different shape. Everybody's nail bed this way and this way has a different shape. So I just kind of, I don't really follow certain rules. I just see what looks good. So this is what you can do. So now this is pushing back the living skin, just nudging, nudging it back. This is what I do every, every day or every couple of days, just nudge it. And when that skin is really healthy and you take care of it, then this is, this is a very easy thing to do. So now, a little bit not used to using this tool, but we'll try. And I really like how, um, I think it's agat, right? I'm really sorry if, I, if I'm not pronouncing it properly. So um, the way she describes, so instead of saying cuticle area, I think she, she says it's a nail contour. And I think I'm gonna steal this from her. Because this, this is really, really good. Because this is not a really... It is a cuticle area. Because the cuticle is here, right? On the nail. But the skin around the nail is really a nail contour. So this is what I do every day. Very, very quickly. And then I just use the carousel. Very small amount on the nails. So that's an everyday thing. Now I'm just going to shape. Shorten and shape the nails. And I think some people believe that when you're filing back and forth, it's like against the grain or something. But the nails don't have a grain the way we think, according to Doug Shun. So, and from personal experience, I also um, found that this doesn't make any difference which way you file, because if the nail is healthy, it's healthy. And it's not going to peel or tear or anything like that. It can tear if you're leaving some catches, then yes, it can catch. But if you just run the buffer block along the edges. Okay, so I see Marta is here. Thank you so much, Marta. She's helping with the, um, with the comments. So I brought the computer, but now the computer is so far that I can't see what's going on. 
Hold on, let me just move this around a little bit. Ah, and I didn't mention the cream as well. <clears throat> okay, so I have my computer here, I can see now. Yes, nail contour. Very good description. Hi, Anna. Is it true that I have a nail? Okay. Well, nail soaks eventually help the nail split. Um, it will help to prevent the new ones from happening, but it's not going to glue the existing split. And also, of course, if your nails are damaged, the damaged part has to grow out. And a lot of times I have a video that's almost uh, ready to be published about splitting nails. So it's coming. When it comes to files, I really don't think that one is necessarily like paper files um, or the glass files are better than paper files. Like paper files obviously don't last very long time, <clears throat> but they're also very um, affordable and they all do a good job. So the, you know, the finish of the nail, it depends on the health of your natural nail. All right. See if we have any questions. Oh, thank you so much. Someone says my nails are beautiful. And you know what? My nails are not very even. But, you know, when, when they're taken care of, it, it looks good. So first I shorten the nail, and then I just round off the edges. And I make the bottom part a little bit less flat. So I kind of round off the corners this way. Check from this angle. This nail is really wonky. From me holding the e-file the e and the nail polishes. And do you notice that this hand is a little bit more stained than the other one? I don't know if you can, yeah, a little bit, no? You can see how it looks on the camera a little bit. Yeah, this one is brighter. So what's happening is I've been using nitrocellulose free nail polish on my left hand only. And it seems that, and only clear on my right. So I, I don't think it's the pigments that make the nail yellow. I think it's the ingredients that possibly nitrocellulose in the nail polish that makes it slightly yellow. It's They're not bad. So probably the yellowing comes from a few different... Um, it happens for a few different reasons. Maybe it's the pigments too, but it's definitely not only the pigments. Difficult to get a good night shape. Um, yes, the blue cocotte, co co cocotte, I think. Uh, I don't think they're such a new brand. I've seen them, they're, f uh, I think they sh ship all over the place. Um, I've been following them for a while. We chatted a few times with the owner. She's been, oh, and by the way, this is so awesome because she, when you go on their website, and I should have included the, the website, maybe she can include the website um, if, if she's here. Mm. So it's a, she calls it a gentle manicure. So this is so awesome because I've been calling, you know, my manicures gentle manicure. So I'm very glad that um, people are liking it. Like they're liking this this method and this this kind of um, approach to manicures, and that they are teaching that way too, because I know that um, you know it's it's a little bit difficult at first to to understand why I'm doing certain things the way I'm doing, um, and because often people want very very um, immediate results, but with with proper uh, skin care and nail, well, nail care and the skin care around the nails. Um, as you can see, like there was really not a lot of work. There was nothing to cut around my nails, right? Because we just have to take care of our skin. Okay, so this is awesome. Very good file. Great. Now, I'm going to grab the buffer and I'm going to use this side. So this is the coarser side just to go like this. 
around the nails, just to smooth everything, just hugging the nail. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. <sighs> Hearing good things about the RPI, Caroline. Hi, Anna. As you know, I have wonderful results with your nail care routine. I, um, rheumatoid, I'm rheumatoid, and the new health condition nails are weak. Would RPI repair mode help? Hearing good things. Um, yes. So I don't know exactly how the product works, but it seems to be obviously not a miracle because it cannot regrow the layers of your nails but whatever you have it seems to be bonding it together a little bit better right so i think it's 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 good to have something definitely so i have a product coming from from france and also pro product coming from beyond polish they were kind enough to send me the product uh, as a PR and one of um, our viewers lives in France and she is in the States she's traveling back now and the product got sent to her and then she's going to send it to me so she should send it she said that she would send it by um, um, Wednesday or something so I should get it on Monday or something so there was a little stuff here okay so let's let's try see how this works okay so this is a little bit sharper but it's it's actually a very good sharpness so i'm just going to very gently you see how i'm parallel with the nail i'm not like stabbing it too much pretty parallel but without a lot of pressure So now I'm pushing back the living skin. And I'm going to now work on one hand, hand at a time. Okay, you have to be gentle with this because you can overdo it if you have a wrong angle. Can you try the cuticle remover on one nail? Yes, yes, for sure. So, and this is what I do before the, the cuticle remover because the cuticle is somewhere here on the nail, right? Here. This is where the cuticle is somewhere. So I'm trying to push back the living skin, which exposes the cuticle. Uh, someone says, I'm on my second use of RPI repair mode. I'm, I really cannot tell if it's doing anything. Um, it's probably doing something. It's just we, we uh, sometimes we expect a little bit too much. So... Now I'm putting the product on the nail. You see, I'm not smearing it on the skin because it's not necessary. This is a skin, this is not a cuticle. We're trying to put it on the cuticle. So here. And actually I forgot one more thing that I wanted to show you. So, and there's a question, interesting what you said about the CeraVe. Carousel is very expensive in the UK, Amazon listed. Is it okay not to buff the nail plate before applying polish? Is that necessary? No, absolutely it's not necessary. Uh, but, you know, it really depends. Um, if you want, if your nails are very shiny, the polish is not going to stick very, very well. So usually in a salon, we, we buff the nail sometimes, especially if it's a first manicure. And we're talking about just removing the shine from the nail. So we're not talking about removing layers from the nail because we want the nail polish to stick because this is what our clients are expecting from us, right? So what I'm doing here is just, you know, getting rid of these little, sometimes little catches that tend to bother us. So with just with the edge of the file, as you, as, as you can see, I can do this with the metal file and I can also do it with this file. So if I do my nails, I usually, I don't buff because um, I just don't. If the polish peels off a little bit or if I have some chips or something, I just redo my nails. But, you know, if a client comes in and they're expecting like a, a, a week long manicure, then, oops, then they, they, they expect, expect what they expect. So now I'm going to use I think um, they're saying that now they're using, they have a dropper. Okay, 
dropper would be nice too, but this is good too. Because this is a little bit thicker than the Blue Cross that I'm used to. So I'm just putting like a bead, I'm just moving it around. So now, um, you wanna wait two minutes and I'm going to actually time it and then look at your questions. Oops, try to move around. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna look at your questions. Um, uh, Mercedes says, I love the gentle manicure method because regular manicures actually hurt. I'm not sure if my nails hands are sensitive or not, but harsh filing and buffing actually is very uncomfortable. Yeah, it depends how it's done. Very often when people are filing the nails, when the way I'm filing the nail, I usually hold the finger so the finger is not moving. Because sometimes when, uh, you know, the nail technician is not very comfortable, they're not holding the finger very tight and the nail is moving and it's hurting everything too. Okay, so Julia says, uh, what is the best way to smooth hard bits on sidewalls that are hard to reach with a file? I use Kerso daily and oil multiple times daily, but I use my hands a lot and I still get calloused and hard bits. Well, you know, to a degree, the 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 callus happens for a reason because the skin is just trying to protect itself. So um, you probably need a little bit of that callus if you're working a lot with your hands. So what I would say, if there was like a piece that's sticking up, then you can snip it you know, with the cuticle nippers like this, just that one little piece, but just don't go around and grabbing the whole skin and removing it. You see the difference this way? Um, so now it's almost two minutes. So I'm going to grab water. So normally I would either, you can wash your hands, but I'm, I have just warm water here and I'm gonna start with my thumb because it's been sitting there for a little bit longer. So you wanna make sure you wash it off or you um, use warm water. So what you can do is now, so you see now this is the cuticle that's lifting off the nail plate. And sometimes, I think the last few times I didn't even do like a full manicure um, with the cuticle remover. So I might have a little bit more cuticle. So now what I'm going to do is just go like this. And someone was asking me what's the temperature of water. I pretty much very hot water, like almost boiling water because I want the oil to really warm up, right? So I'm going to use this one. So someone says, idea I would love to share with you. Okay, yeah, I'm open to ideas. Uh, are nail ridges just impossible to remedy? Yes, pretty much, I would say, because nail ridges start underneath. This is how your nail is growing. I don't know if I can get any closer. Yeah. But you can also do, you can go oh, here from the middle down. Because sometimes when you go from here, you almost like catch this the skin a little bit. So you have to be careful. So from the middle and down. And don't overdo it, obviously. Now, if someone, because a lot of times people are asking if, um, what happens if you have a lot of, well, what people call it overgrown cuticle. It's not an overgrown cuticle. It's usually like a scab that forms because you've been cutting the skin or filing it a lot, or sometimes uh, the skin is just really, really dry. And as the nail is growing, it just stretches with the nail. So what do you do in that case? Would you be doing this type of manicure? You know, I actually wouldn't. I would start using carousel and gently nudge the skin around the nails and for about two weeks until the skin softens up a little bit and it loosens up and then do this type of manicure if you are wearing nail polish because if you're not wearing nail polish you don't really have to remove the cuticle okay let's see if i have any questions hot temperature of water 
idea before you shower put nitro gloves uh spares your polish yeah that's true yeah it's more for nail polish because yes when you although i find the stronger your nails are the healthier they are they uh, usually don't unless i guess it depends how long you shower for but usually it shouldn't be too too bad but especially if the nails are too flexible because they're too damaged then they absorb way too much water and then the polish comes off but it's especially bad when uh when you're doing um like a lot of baths because then you're sitting in that water and the skin and the nails get very very soft okay so it's better to go from the middle down Well, plastic cuticle push will remove the cuticle if you don't use Blue Cross. No, no, because you, like the cuticle is invisible. Like you would have to put a lot of pressure right now. So you would have to use a very hot, like very um, sharp tool. Like I think with this one, I could do it. You see, oh, I don't know. like with the edge. But the problem is that a lot of times people don't know when to stop. And then they just uh, like cut into their nails. So it's better to, to use less pressure and just gently remove it with some kind of a cuticle softener. So, but can you see the difference where I'm putting the cuticle remover? Because the potassium hydroxide is, is, it's very alkaline, so we don't really need it on the living skin. We just need it on the cuticle. Okay. And as this is working, I'm going to look at the comments. Okay. Okay, so Julia says, thank you. I do use cuticle nipper, but still find it hard to use and be precise. Maybe I need to try a different one. Yeah, and maybe, I don't know. It just maybe you, you have to give it more time because sometimes people um, just give up too quickly. And it just takes time it takes time for the nails to improve and the skin around the nails to improve, right? So sometimes you have these little skirts. So what you can do, you can just grab a buffer and just go underneath to get rid of these little things. Okay. Yeah, scissors you can use too, but you know, Again, be very, very, like this is like an, an emergency situation with the scissors and the cuticle on the purse. This is not something that for each manicure, you should just, you know, cut the skin around the nails. Yeah, Annette, if you have time, apply oil and cream before and you will get a skin treatment. Yeah, because the heat will help the, you know, the cream to penetrate for sure. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Uh, Snazzy donated to the channel. My nails are mostly fine until I wear polish too often, but it's basically to avoid the lamination peeling. You know, guys, such a good question. Mm, it happens, it happens, um, I would say it happens the least with Dazzle Dry, but some people find the opposite. I actually just talked to a person who is saying that she doesn't usually have issues with other brands, but she does have an issue, issue with nasal dry. So it really depends. Um, but I don't think, you know, the, the, the reason for the base coat is for the base coat to bond really well to the nail. And I think when the base coat is bonded, it just picks up the layers of the natural nail. And this is what's happening. So now you could do this, like almost uh, without removing this, but I find it's hard to see what you're doing. So this is why... 
part of part of it is obviously the gel, but I like to remove it so I can see what's going on. Julia says, oh no, I will try to avoid cutting rough edges. Yeah. Okay, so just smooth it with a file like this, you know, with a smooth file, just like this. You can get a lot. Like, I don't, I don't know why you, maybe you're just doing it on the wrong angle or something like that. So let's use the, the plastic one. Yeah, with the plastic one, it's harder to pick up that cuticle. But again, don't worry too much about the cuticle unless you are wearing nail polish because, you know, otherwise, you know, it's it's not necessary really to, to remove the cuticle. Okay, there's not a lot of cuticle here. All right, the other. Nails. Uh, Catherine from Georgia says, and I'm doing gentle manicure while watching your work. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have very deep and puffy side walls, Julia? Very good question, Marta. I have Polish brand alternative to Carousel. Finding it how to get price getting ridiculous. Um, yes, so from Poland, it's called Her um, Hasserol. But carousel is available through iHerb pretty much everywhere in Europe, so it should not be too expensive. It's around 10 euros. And I have links on Patreon for, for the, uh, for the um, carousel. And um, Caroline, you can only get it in Poland because they don't ship. So if you are in Poland, it's it's at pharmacies because it's considered a medication because it has 5% of salicylic acid, which is a um, pretty rare ingredient. Normally, the, the, the uh, salicylic acid is available up to 2% in cosmetics or even less, 1% sometimes. Oh, thank you so much. Thumbs up for Anna. So you see, this is just a cuticle, so satisfying. But again, be very, very gentle. So what I'm doing, I'm not stabbing myself like this, right? I'm holding my finger here for, for some support. And very gently gliding. Yes, so Terry, again, we have to really uh, remember that Mm, cuticle is what I'm removing. So you can't, nothing can happen to the cuticle. Cuticle is dead skin cells that fell off the, the skin here, the underneath fold part of the skin. So you don't want to be messing with the skin around the nails, yes, because of the blood thinners. So be very, very gentle. And yes, don't use any super sharp tools. And do this often enough because the more you do it, the more practice you're going to have and the better you're going to get. Um, so doing this on a daily basis, sorry, daily, uh, on a weekly basis really, really helps. Okay. So now this is what I would do. So this is the 300. This is 180. So if I was polishing my nails, especially with like a red color or something that has a lot of color, you wanna make sure that there is absolutely no skin cells left on the nail. Like you wanna make sure that this surface is nice and smooth um, because otherwise the polish is just going to like flood into those little crevices and it's going to be very difficult to polish. So what you can do now is you can use the soft side and just literally just place it on the nail and just put some pressure and go like this. And then you can just go around the free edge. And if this is the first time you're doing manicure, this is what removing shine is, okay? This is it. 
So this, I'm not pressing down and like smoothing the nail. Again, with a soft side, with a 300 sign. Just smoothing the cuticle area where the cuticle was. And you can just, as you can see, this is just removing the shine before nail polish. So this time I'm going to do it, but I don't do it with each manicure. Um, on clients, if I'm polishing the nails, I only remove the, the shine, sorry, I clean up the cuticle area just so the polish does not f flood the skin if there was any skin cells. So this is what I do normally for clients. Um, I really like these buffer blocks. I don't use them in the salon because I throw away my, my, my blocks because they can't be sanitized properly. So for myself, you can definitely, oh, Mercedes, thank you so much. My goodness, you're so generous. I really, really appreciate it. So this is what you can do. Okay. I'm gonna show you from this perspective here. Oops. Can you see? One side, the other side, just around the cuticle. So again, now I'm just going to show you how, to, how I remove the shine from the nail, but I don't do this every time. Because if you're doing this every time, you're just basically removing layers and layers of the nail. You, you don't, you don't want to do that. Because the top layers of the nails are much more dense and the product sticks better to them. So you definitely you don't want to be removing those layers. You just want to be removing the shine a little bit. Or just clean up the cuticle area, that's it, before you're polishing. And this is it. Okay, let's look at the Natural Nail Academy right here. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to just spray alcohol, my nails. And wipe. I found, I find the towel to be actually very, very effective. I'm doing it this way. Um, Julia, the, the file that's thinner or the one that's more flexible. Usually uh, you don't want anything that's too, too flexible because you have better control over a file that's not very flexible. Okay, can you see this little piece? Again, I'm holding. That's it. All right, so let's use this one. to lower my chair a little bit. All right, so let's see how this works. So I'm going to hold it this way. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. Yes, I'm, on the other hand, I'm gonna use the other one. <laughs> because they're actually, they were very similar. Love it. Um, I find um, sometimes using two coats is good. I like to put a little bit more pressure on the first coat. Oh, what is it, fluffy? Spoke too soon. Okay. If this happens, because I flooded my skin a little bit here, I do this. See, I'm holding it here, close to the nail. Also, um, that way I won't drop it anywhere. This is not streaky whatsoever. 
Let's see if I. Uh, yeah, so this is this is a base glow. This is kind of like an all-in-one, like the Dior Neil Glow. So it's not really, it's like a treatment. So it has hexanol in it, which is a mm, bit of a hardener. So this is almost like a ridge filler that you can just use on its by itself. I really like these type of uh, finishes because it's very, very simple, <clears throat> very easy, very chic. Anyone else do their manicure process with NS advice voice in their head? Oh my God. Push gently. Don't cut the, cut the living skin. Don't buff the... Okay, don't buff the nail plate. The nail bed is underneath. Just a little carousel. That's hilarious. So true, so true. Okay, I'm going to now put it on the... On the... On the what do you call it? Table. Because I'm going to be doing my thumb with a little bit more product. I have to get used to the amount of product that's necessary. I have a little bit too much. Wipe some of it off. Actually, this has leveled really well. So, <laughs> you guys are gonna have like a trauma from the word cuticle. Everybody's gonna be scared of using it. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch this up. This is really nice, really, really nice. No? The cuticle police, yeah. <laughs> They're gonna have nightmares. This is such a timeless look. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to do the other hand. And in the meantime, I'm going to answer your questions and stuff. Okay, so the ingredients are a very base, well, basic, very like traditional nail polish ingredients, which is batyl acetate, ethyl acetate, nitrocellulose, um, acetyl tributyl citrate, adipitic acid. <sighs> this, oh my God, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce these things. Acrylate copolymer, uh, hexanol. Yeah, dimethicone usually spreads spreads better when it has some dimethicone. Yeah, so this is just like, a, you can use it in two coats or just one coat. Two coats are going to have a little bit more shine, uh, but I don't see any streaking, which is really, really good. Mm. Okay, uh, Shelly, yes. Proximal nail fault has become part of my everyday vocabulary. And you know what? Um, I think sometimes, I mean, I explain what it is, but really what we have to remember, which obviously is good to know the technical name, um, but if we just even refer to it as a living skin or just a skin, skin around the nails, because you, it's like you have skin on top of your hand, skin on your knees or skin on your elbow. It's skin around the nails or a nail contour. This is really good. So then when you nudge back the living skin the nail contour improves i love it i'm gonna start using it so i'm going to give it another minute to dry yeah i don't say cuticle anymore but it's difficult right because a lot of the companies which to me that didn't make any sense because why would you be moisturizing the cuticle and then you would be removing the cuticle but then you can't touch the cuticle like it just didn't but if you remove it how can you touch it right so that didn't make any sense. Okay, let's let's move to the side and let's do the other hand. So I'm going to put this on the. Can you see what I'm doing? I have to say, very good application. It follows. The brush really, really well. No streaking whatsoever.
I'm going to uh, include a link if you guys are interested. Okay, you can see. So this kind of reminds me of the Dior uh, Abricot base coat. There you go. Okay, so let's see if, as I'm drying these nails, see what's happening. Uh, I use Essie here to say base coat, the same problem. I use Enhance Essence, but always can tear off layers of my nails. Okay. Essie Expressy. Um, I, I'm not really. Um, a huge believer in the thinner because usually it um, it can it's best thing to ask Essie honestly but usually a thinner messes with the formula of the nail polish except for the for dazzle dry um, so I tend to especially on the polishes that I use for clients I tend to not um, not thin them out because I don't want to lose the quality for yourself, you can pretty much, I guess, try. Yes, the second ha uh, hand was the beige color, so I don't see a huge difference. A little bit, maybe. This is more white looking, although these nails were a little bit more stained. Mm, I use Essie here to stain basically the same problem. Uh, does Blue Cocotte also use the term gentle manicure? Yes. Yeah, I just saw that that they do, which is awesome. I, I love it. Uh, what is the ingredient, active ingredient of the OPI repair? Is it a hardener? They, they list some um, patented technology, which I couldn't find any information about, so I don't know. But, uh, okay, so this is dry. So I don't know what it is. It's a very simple formula. Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's something new. Uh, and is it hardener? Uh, you know, I don't know. That's the thing because it's supposed to repair the bonds. So um, is it supposed to, I don't know. I would have to talk to a chemist and really see what they mean. Not a marketer, but, but a chemist. So if it repairs the broken bonds, so the the, the bonds break, I guess, because of water exposure, you know, um, detergents and I guess things like that, even probably nail polish can damage the bonds in the nail, in the nail plate. So if it just rebuilds the ones that are broken, then it's like a strengthener. But if it makes new bonds, then it would be a hardener because eventually over time it could, um, over harden the nail plate, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I'm not a chemist. So yeah, exactly. So uh, Marta is saying repairing broken bonds sounds like Olaplex technology. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, you, you're the second person um, that gets bubbles with the Dior Abricot. I don't, I don't get it. I actually just did it on my toes uh, two weeks ago or something and I wore it for two weeks. No problem. I didn't get any bubbles, so I don't know. Okay, so this is drying. Very, very, well, very well, it's not super quick drying, so now I'm just gonna use some oil. So normally I just use, I'll show you what I use, and I now I show my clients what, what I, how much oil I use, because very often people are not using the oil because they, they find it too greasy. So I just use one drop and I show them. Dip my nail, just go like this, my nail, my finger. Okay, and this is drying. Okay, I'm gonna wait a little bit, but basically this is what you can do. And this is good enough for after each hand wash. This is all you need. But because I just did a manicure, I just like that the oil really goes into every crevice. So I give myself a treat and I just put a drop on each nail. And then I just do like a little hand massage. I'm gonna grab the other. I like the dropper here. It's a thicker oil, which is nice. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, Tony, uh, thanks. I got the OPR repair, but I was worried it was a hardener because I couldn't tell from the ingredients. I know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the ingredients. I don't understand. Uh, David made it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, David was saying that he's sick. Just checking in real quick, starting to feel better. Had a lot of uh, bad pork sandwich. Oh, uh oh, that's terrible. My God. <sighs> okay, so hopefully, David, you feel better. How do I find a salon in Toronto area that does your type of mani pedi? I really don't know. I know Kate from uh, Nail Candy. She's uh, she has a place, a salon in Toronto on Bay Street somewhere, I think, or King Street, I think, actually King. And she's very very good, but I don't think she takes any clients. Yeah. What does the oil smells like? It smells very, very light, which is nice because I'm not a huge, um, I like smells, but a lot of smells bother me. So very, very light citrusy, but very, very light. Like you can barely smell it, which is good. Yeah. Very, very light, but the oil in itself is very emollient. So it's not a super, super light oil. Okay, so cream next, right? So cream actually, normally after each hand wash, you need this much cream. Can you see? Tiny, tiny amount. I'm gonna use a little bit more. But I show my clients that uh, almost every time because very often people forget and they, they think that they have to use as much as I use after their manicure uh, because um, you know, I do this little hand massage, but you don't have to use this this much when you are doing your own, uh, when you're putting it after each hand wash. I, I think it's very nice. So Mercedes is asking if, if I like it or I don't like it. I think, I think it's a good idea to have like a kit. It's a very nice idea. Um, I like the polishes. I think it's very nice. I think it's very nice. So I'm going to include the link if someone is interested. And I really am excited that she teaches gentle manicures. This is really, really exciting. And she's showing how to just nudge back the living skin to, to, or nudge back the skin around the nails, that this is a process. Um, and I think she was, you know, it's, it's so true because she was mentioning, I think it was in one of the stories or something that, she started cutting less and less around the nails, the, the living skin, because, you know, that's what we've been taught. Even when I went um, for the courses that I went, everybody was doing it and you kind of expected, you were expected to do it. So, um, and it's sometimes very difficult to, to have the clients to understand. So, you know, that the skin should not be cut. So normally when people... Um, when people are transitioning from cutting their skin, they start to just cut less and less. Sometimes that's, that's, that's a transition that's, you know, you can do that too. And you just understand the less you cut, the, the better the skin will become. And I think with time, because I remember I used to cut the skin just thinking just a little bit and I had more skin because now I don't even understand, like there would be nothing to cut. Right. So it, it does get even better when you absolutely don't do any cutting. So you know, as you can see, the electric file is not needed when you take care of your hands. This very, very simple gentle manicure is all you need. And all these tools that I use, very basic stuff, which this is all you need. You don't need any super, anything super fancy, any super fancy electric files, anything like that. Of course, in the salon, it's different because, you know, a lot of my clients don't take care of their hands because they think that this is my job. And they come in once every three weeks, but there was, you know, you can't, um, you know, it's it's the same with with working out. You cannot outwork a bad diet. Okay, I'm kind of feeling weird talking to the um, the towel now. So let me see if I can move the uh, the camera. Okay, so hold on a second, so you guys can see me. Hold on, hold on. So let's see if I can move this up. 
and then this down so you can see me can you see me okay oh my goodness here here we are my face is red so if i can move this okay uh okay what were we saying what were we saying I'm gonna move this. All right. So now move this away. My glasses. My goodness, why am I so red? Okay, so let's see what you guys are saying. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Rosie is saying that no more of those cheap and cheerful places at uh there are dime a dozen on every corner unfortunately yeah because mm, sometimes when the nail when the nails get damaged it takes months and months for it to grow out so unfortunately i don't think it's worth it sometimes uh i really love the hand cream from dermalect a timeless anti-aging daily hand treatment not greasy light fragrance absorbs quickly Dermalect. Okay, let's just see timeless anti-aging. Let's just Google it. Anti-aging hand cream. I'm curious what's in that cream to be anti-aging. Here we go. description uh what are the ingredients how to use uh i really don't understand why people don't put ingredients on their on their you know websites key ingredients okay protein peptide hyaluronic acid collagen extracts Collagen is it's a good moisturizer. That's about it. Yes, that's what they say. Superior moisturizer. Mm. So the best anti-aging cream or treatment is um, sunscreen because majority of the of the skin damage happens because of the sun damage. So sunscreen as often as you, as you can is a good idea. And then, um, ah. Slow manicure. Ah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yes, so sunscreen is a good idea. And then something with retinol or tretinoin, which is a prescription uh, prescription cream, which is actually very, very cheap. If you can get a, like a, a generic tretinoin, so retin -A. Actually, the composition of the cream is a cold cream for the face. Okay. Slow manicure. Okay, let's just... It's super emotional for me. Oh my God, see my products in your hands, Anna. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, slow manicure you know i like it too it's like it goes along the lines with you know the slow fashion and and things like that that's that's a very good idea with respect the nails and the skin around the nails so i really i'm really happy that that um you like this you know this technique as well so this is really really good i love to see other people um, using the same thing that's that's great Do you ever have clients that ask you to cut the proximal nail fold? Um, not anymore because usually uh, people find me because their friends tell them that I do very gentle manicures and I don't cut the skin. And sometimes people just ask why I don't cut it. So then I explain to them that because I don't cut it, the skin does not grow harder. And then they are like, yeah, yeah, when they cut it, it grows harder. So I don't really have very um, difficult time with that. Um, I tell people how to take care of the skin and how to use the cream and they usually do. And yeah, I, I really, 
Uh, the way I explain it, usually people understand it. So I don't, I don't have issues. And I think maybe, you know, if, if someone really said that they expect that, then I would say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not the, the manicures that they are definitely looking for because then they ha they should go to a place that offers that. But I, I really don't think that that's, that's a good approach to, to be cutting the living skin. So, but I'm sure there are, I mean, there are other places that do it. So why not if they, if that's what they want to do. The repair mode is alcohol, uh, water, uh, malic acid, and that one six hex uh, something diam di diamine or something. Yeah. So it's a very simple ingredient list. I don't know how that works. Um, what's the difference between the C and the RX and OPI repair? I'm not sure yet because the ingredients are very different, and I have to. I would have to talk to a chemist in in, in order to which I emailed them, I haven't heard back from them. I have a couple of people that I know in the industry. So it just takes time sometimes to, you know, get hold of people that are obviously busy, but people that are formulating cosmetics. So they, they would know. Um, so the Rescue RX, it just works by like bonding to the top layer of the nail. So it just creates um, almost like a stronger surface or something so that's how you know uh the chemist explained that to me that's how it works so none of them really repaired the nail like i know it's it's called repair but in i guess it just depends how you understand the word repair right urea repair plus five percent urea cream from userin uh lucy is asking about that uh, yeah, and th but the thing is with the carousel is that, and the Hasserol is that it's not only the urea that is effective, but also the 5% of salicylic acid, it's an exfoliant, that is really, really effective, especially for that hard skin. Okay. Let's see if there's another question. Yes, yes, it's on Amazon because on uh, Beyond Polish, they ran out already uh, of the, oh, found, uh, what, what did you find on Amazon? I thought you were you guys were talking about the OPI. Mention Eucerin, five uh, percent urea. Yes, so no, I mean these Eucerin is very good. The five percent urea urea lotion, it's good for as a like a daily moisturizer and stuff. So, uh, but I find that the um, the carousel just does things a little bit differently. They have also thirty percent urea, but but the thing is with with a lot of stuff more, it's not necessarily better. Um, the, very often the urea, the higher urea, um, urea is very difficult to, to formulate with. And, and very often, um, the higher percent, it kind of like cr crystallizes. So, and then the skin really doesn't benefit from it, from what I've been reading. So, um, I'm not sure if you necessarily benefit from such high amounts, and also very, very high amounts of urea are, um, could be softening to the nail, which we don't necessarily want. And they are often used by podiatrists to treat people with fungal infections and to soften the nail before some procedures or something. How do you like the blue uh, cocoa as compared to the Dior Nail Glow? Uh, so the Dior Nail Glow has that glow effect. I'm not sure if that one has it. I don't think so. Let's just see, put it under the lamp. But you know what, I do like it. I do like it. Let's just see under the lamp. I see, and then, so the, the Dior Neo Glow, no, this one doesn't glow. 
and we can see it in a bottle if it glows. No, it doesn't have. So the Dior Nail Go has like a fluorescent look and it makes the nails look brighter, especially outside. Some people love that look, some people don't like that look. So it really depends. Um, are there any Isden nail products that you would recommend? The Isden pen is, is really nice. Um, so it's this product. I find that it kind of like seals the nail a little bit nicely. Can you see it? This one. Um, and other than that, I'm not sure if they have any more nail products. It's, it's just that. And what is the ideal percentage of urea in the cream? Well, it depends what you are looking for, right? So for example, urea 5% is like a very good body lotion that you can use it on a regular basis. And because you're using it on a regular basis, you don't want something that's very sticky or very heavy. So the higher amount of urea is going to make it more sticky. So it's not a very pleasant thing to use. And that's why people maybe would not want to use something that's a higher percentage. So in a body lotion, you're not trying to exfoliate a lot of skin. You're just trying to, you know, keep the skin nice and moisturized because in 5%, probably like between two to 5%, the, the role of the cream is to moisturize the skin more than anything. And then over 10%, it gets a little exfoliating. And the reason why this the carousel is exfoliating because it also has the salicylic acid, which also is an exfoliant. So I think they work in a synergy that way. But also then, if you have, let's say 10% would be good for the heels and things like that, maybe 15%. Usually it's 10%. I, I, that's kind of a nice feeling treatment because once you go higher, the products become very sticky and they're just not very nice to, to use on the, on the feet. I don't know, everything sticks to it. And again, you when you get up to the 30 and 40%, then it's very, very softening. And that is used by podiatrists usually for to really soften or remove the nails. So Mercedes is actually, is the blue co uh, cocotte also a nail treatment? Yes, it has uh, hex hexanol in it. So it's, it's supposed to be a hardener, hexanol. Yeah, I bought a cheap 20%, 30% uh, urea cream from Amazon and it was awful and it went straight into the bin. Yeah. So the number is not, because sometimes um, label, I mean, it's important to understand what it says on the label, but also it's not everything. It's how the product is formulated. Sometimes with certain ingredients, the products work in a, in a synergy. Sometimes the formula has other ingredients that make the other ingredients a little bit more effective. So it really, really depends. brightening okay so uh she's saying i got working on mr mr cocotte nail care matte brightening actually okay that's really nice okay let's see other comments okay why is it always giving me top chat? I want to live chat. Okay. Michelle, thank you so much. I'm glad I found you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, okay, I answer this. And you know what, kind of go back to what Rosie was saying about the, the manicures. Like, I really don't hate on the salons. Absolutely. I think it's just too bad that people don't offer more gentle treatments, but it's a complicated topic and you can't change the world. You can change what you're doing about yourself. So simple manicures and simple nail care or hand care, it's not really that difficult if you are just being consistent so, I mean, this is how I actually even start, started in the industry because I couldn't find anyone that would do the nails the way I wanted to. So I just started doing my own nails. So, and it's, it's really not that difficult, especially when you're just doing natural nails. When it comes to gel polishes, things like that, I really don't recommend doing this because these products can be quite allergenic. So um, I would rather leave that to a, a professional 
who's really responsible. Um, so, I mean, again, I'm not hating on the salons, but I think salons should maybe reevaluate on how they treat the industry and how they treat the clients, because I think, um, I don't know, people deserve a little bit better. Because unfortunately, it just, it's just, it's such a, um, I don't know, poor ser service quality issue that's that's happening that is just really, really sad. Oh my God, Susanna, I have to say that many times I watch your videos until 2 a.m. You are the nail technician of the century for me all. Oh, thank you, so you explain everything very clearly and you taught me many useful things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. And you know what, Rosie? Yeah, just learn how to do your own nails, honestly, because um, if there are not a lot of salons that are, because you know what, I kind of understand because the the more you start learning about the the skincare, the more you realize that majority of things are outside of your control in a salon. The majority of things that clients have to be doing at home. And usually people that are coming to salon, they don't want to do anything at home. So it's almost like it's just very difficult to, to, to find happy, you know, middle ground, unfortunately. Uh, against accents, gel manicures at this point. Mm, everyone against accents. Oh, uh, greetings everyone. Against accents, gel manicure at this point. No, no. Why would I be ac against accents, gel manicures? No, I think when it's done properly, I mean, that this is where I, um, I think nail professionals should be doing gel manicures. I don't think it should be done by a general public because these things should be taught properly and um, people should, yeah, should have some type of education when it comes to uh, using these products safely. So there was nothing wrong necessarily with the gel. The, the, the thing is that very often people use the gel for the wrong reason. So for example, they use it for strength. And the truth is that gel products or acrylics or gel polish, whatever, all these products are bonded to the natural nail. And if you are re really hard on your nails, you are yanking that product off your nails. So you are loosening the top cells. And then we constantly have to fix things and the nails are getting da more damaged and more damaged. So when people get it for the look, for the shine, for how it looks, for how you can, um, for example, uh, smooth the, 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 the texture of your nails. All of that is, is great. But again, when it's done for the right reasons. So, I mean, I do shellac manicures. I really like it the way, you know, it looks. For some people, it's a good idea. But again, people push it, right? So when the products should be, for example, removed every two to three weeks and you should be using oil and you should be very gentle on your nails, then when the product is not breaking and chipping, then people stretch it to a month and they don't use the oil because they don't really necessarily right away see a difference because, for example, they forgot to use the oil for a month and nothing has changed. But eventually over time, the nails get more and more surface damage and eventually the surface damage is, is, is quite visible. As you can see, even with that last client that I posted her, her manicure, and you can see that now she has some surface damage. So what I'm gonna try to do for her now is to see if um, she can come back a little bit more often and if we can do the dazzle dry manicure because it's easier to remove it. So then I would tell her to remove the gel manicure, sorry, to remove the dazzle dry a couple days before she comes to see me. And then she can use the oil or do warm oil soaks to, to um, condition the nail because over time uh, even the acetone soaking in acetone like it's it's not ideal Liz thank you so much for for uh, for your donation thank you so much I really really appreciate it my goodness uh, thank you for all the for all you do for us thank you so much
you know, I have followed your advice and routines and my nails have never looked better. I am so grateful for your channel. I will never get my fingers done in a salon again. Well, again, let's not generalize. For example, Marta here, she, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if she's working now, but she, uh, she's a nail technician and I'm sure she does a very, very gentle manicures. So, but again, it's just not something that's very, very popular. But I think what I'm going to do is um, eventually, I just had someone call me, of course. Um, eventually, it would be nice to maybe come up with some kind of like a, um, a list of salons that are interested or they offer you know, this type of manicure that is very, very gentle manicure. Um, I don't know, maybe that would be a good idea. Yeah, and you know what? This is why too Rosie is saying, I tend to agree with Anina. I will go to salon on for the right manicure and pedicure. I no longer accept the uh, mishmash of chemicals that are used. Yeah, and the lack of education, right? Um... And I think this is how things change too. When people expect a little bit better, the the industry responds to it. And unfortunately, the, the what is expected now is very, very quick and cheap service. And this became a norm. And that's and people don't expect to to pay a lot. This is like a throwaway service. We live in such, you know, unfortunately. It's such a consumerism that, you know, people think that they should be able to afford a manicure once a week, but it should be really a treat. And um, the prices, of course, cannot be as cheap as people are hoping for the prices to be because it's just impossible. If you want to spend the right time with a client and then clean everything properly, educate yourself, you know, have ongoing training and stuff, it, you cannot expect the manicure to cost $10, right? So, you know, the prices will have to be higher in order to um, provide good quality service. But of course, unfortunately, what we often have is high prices and still poor qual quality service and, uh, you know, and not very educated um, nail techs, right? Yeah, I agree for the, uh, for now, people expect the cheap service, but once they know better, and some people do and some people never will. And that's fine too. Some people prefer like, you know, um, good quality food and some people like fast food. And I don't think we can change anyone and I'm not trying to talk anybody into my services. If someone is, you know, not interested, then I absolutely get it. Like not, not everybody has the same goals in mind, so. Um, I located a spot in Markham, Ontario, that does Dazzle Dry manicures and they are more expensive. Um, yeah, it would be, the product is quite expensive for sure. So the, the price would be more expensive and it, it takes like an hour to do a good manicure, right? <laughs> You're changing the nail, nail industry. Uh, maybe a little bit. I mean, I, I have a very small voice. Um, you know, there's a lot of... Um, there was a lot of uh, different types of manicures out there that show very, and it's it's very popular and people really like to see this immediate before and after to be so amazing. And, and we are drawn to that, but unfortunately the, the long-term results are not as good because um, usually you have like a rebound effect, right? So even same thing with, you know, going to the gym or with losing weight, um, it's, it's, people are interested in seeing very instant results and like losing so much weight in a very short amount of time. But um, usually those results are not long-term because people rebound to, it's, it's just not, uh, you cannot do it long-term, right? So sometimes making small changes over a long period of time is much more effective. Oh, thank you so much, Rosie. Yeah, you know, it, that's true too. Like sometimes, yes, maybe it's not a big wave, but eventually it it eventually will, will make a difference, right? Um, do you know about the so-called Japanese manicures? Just found them in a very gentle salon some minutes ago. I never tried them. Uh, I'm not sure if they make any sense. Um, 
so yeah the japanese manicures i think what they are and i mean people like to put labels on things so i'm not sure if that that's and this is what i i understand it is uh, japanese manicure so usually what they do is they buff the nail with like a cream but the cream unfortunately uh, if you are able to buff the nails to a high shine two things would have to happen one you have to be removing because if the nail is uneven right like it's texture so you even either have to remove the top layer or you have to add something to it i don't think the the, the creams are usually um, a little bit abras abrasive so they probably won't even uh, feel you won't even feel that they're abrasive but i think they are looking at the ingredients and if you're using even the very very soft buffer but you have abrasive on on the buffer then you uh, how else can you get change in texture of the natural nail you should you probably are removing something so now if you have very thick nails um which doesn't happen often i don't really see a lot of people with very thick nails that can afford to lose layers of the natural nail then maybe it's okay for you but that's very rare and usually people i've seen it because my clients probably have done it although they probably use the the glass tool that that makes the nails very very shiny and they took like half the of their nail plate off because then when the nail was regrowing you could see there was like a huge dip in the natural nail where she removed the layers and she just thought she was just making the nail glossy right she was not filing anything she was just buff buffing it with a gentle buffer but if obviously if you're putting pressure um, on that buffer then you are removing something right um, does anyone here use uh, her home? Um, I have the um, the brightener. It's okay. It's fine. I'm not really a huge fan of the bottle and the brushes. I'll be honest. It's not. It's not any better than anything else. It's it's a nice brightener, but it makes the nails look very almost like white bluish. So some people like that look of that brightener but other than that i don't think it's i mean it's nice but i wish they had different brushes and different yeah the brush yeah yeah so i i just yeah i'm not i'm not a fan of the the product because you know what in my opinion if you're paying especially a lot of money for the product they better have good brushes because if i have to mess around and pour the product in different in the different bottles then why would i be paying so much money for it right yeah yeah for the price i would have to say that the dior it's expensive but it's very consistent has always good brushes um it's really really good and it really per application is not a huge difference in price so yes at once you are paying a lot of money but it's i really like the natural look and i have to say like guys like it's too bad because uh, I got this product, this one from Marta a long time ago, and this is amazing. This is the closest to Dior, the way it looks. It's very, very, um, it has a very gentle glow and it's it's very natural looking. It doesn't have nitrocellulose and that's what I've been wearing on my left hand. And my nails are not stained whatsoever. They're really nice, but it's not available. I don't know why. It's such a nice product, mind you. It tends to peel a little bit after three to four days, but this is not a big deal because it takes like uh, maybe five minutes to repolish the nails, right? So unfortunately, I mean, thank God she sent me like three bottles. I think she went to like two different stores in Denmark to get it. Uh, and I really, really appreciate it. But I'm on a probably, I think I used up the whole bottle. As you can see, probably, well, no. Okay, so this is, the second bottle this is the third one so it gets a little bit thicker over time obviously it's a very good product it's from uh cn from Lidl, and it's called nail brightener so i use the white pen so i don't have to use white polish to do the french underneath your nails do you use it for like underneath or you 
polish uh, or you put it on top somewhere. Uh, someone is saying, I'm seeing a lot of uh, not sure advertised. Uh, is that a, some clean brand? You know, I really don't like the whole clean movement because none of these polishes are any cleaner than others. The word clean really, it doesn't have any, any um, there was no rules. Which, you know, clean for what? Are you, you know, eating these products? Are you, how often are you using them? In which amounts? Um, all of these, all, all the nail polishes are fine. They're safe. Um, I, I'm so tired of this fear-based marketing and people scaring the pants out of you because they have something to sell. Like, I think I would rather sell things on quality and, and the results, but when you can't sell the results, you are usually then bad-mouthing other companies that they have something dangerous. Like, other than that, like, I just don't understand. It's just really, really bad because then sometimes the companies get almost forced into this type of marketing yeah, it's a gimmick um, because then if you don't start advertising your products as clean, then people think that they are not clean. And it's the same thing with the vegan thing. Just because something is vegan, it doesn't mean that it's like that it's um, hypoallergenic or anything like that. Like I do understand when someone is a, a vegan, when they don't want to use anything animal based, then I understand. But most of the polishes are vegan anyway. So and people go towards the vegan because they think it's healthier which absolutely that's not the case because there's a lot of poisons that are vegan too right yeah um when i got breast cancer i had months i was afraid my manicure and mavala hardener for decades had sickened me no see that's the thing like yeah it's just that fear it's just not it's not cool because yeah you know people that are scared are very easily manipulated and i think that's what that's what it's all about um i understand good information but um and 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 sure that information sometimes changes that we find out different things but generally all this thing is just blown out of proportion because they what they do is they sometimes take some ingredient and they just you know let's say the ingredient is bad for you in huge large amounts but in the nail polish it's in such small amount that it's never gonna pose any risk to your health it's almost like again you know a water can kill you you can go swimming and you know if you get a cramp and you get too much water in your lungs you can die so is water dangerous well it depends on which amount and where in your lungs yes on your skin no and you have to in your stomach no but i guess if you drink too much it can be toxic as well so toxicity and all that stuff it depends on the amount like which amount is toxic we're, we're talking about so it's the same thing with the non-toxic silly things like none of these products are toxic if they're used as proper like as you know as intended but if you drink you know, 12 ounces of a nail polish, then no, that's not going to be good, obviously. I don't know if it's going to be toxic or not, but it's toxicity means on, it, it depends on the dose. It's, it's not a, a black and white statement. It's which dose is toxic. That's the question. And in nail, pro, in nail products, the, even if there is something that's toxic, like alcohol is toxic too on the liver, right? But it, if you wipe your nail with the alcohol, it's not going to be toxic on your liver. It's if you drink too much of it. And it's the same thing. So yeah, it's just so silly. Uh, I think this surgical anesthetic really messed me up for weeks. Um, yeah, so I was all over the place from the pure tarot that resurrected the old warnings. Yeah, anesthetic can be hard on a body for sure. Um, are you going to carry on with the shellac swatching according to their chart? We tried and then we're missing so many colors that are not available here in Spain. And CND is, I, I even asked the CND 
you know, world, like the, the head office. And I, I haven't heard from them, unfortunately. So, um, you know, I, I, we can't really if we're missing so many of the colors. And unfortunately in Spain, not all the colors are available. So, and the distributor is not going to even order them or anything like that. And they're super expensive. So I, I don't know what to do, to be honest with you. And now there are so many colors that are discontinued. So I don't know if we should continue the way we were continuing. I'm a little bit confused. Maybe we should. Uh, okay, so Nina says, I could not find the... Um, the Dior Nail Glow, I guess she means last year. So I bought the Nails Ink Glow Natural and love it. It stays on my nails without peeling for several days. Yeah, that one is very nice too. It's brighter than Dior. So let's say when I tried it on clients, oh my God, Mercedes, thank you. Thank you so much. She again donated money. Thank you so much. Um, so it's, it's brighter. So for example, I asked my clients which ones they prefer and they prefer the Dior. So I'm just saying that that's what the majority of my clients, they want very, very, um, very gentle look, very, very natural. Uh, so my doctor explained, um, uh, Mercedes says, my doctor explained how coconut can be very unhealthy. He said people need to watch out for the coconut content in vegan meats and cheese um i don't know uh, you know because the thing is um it's not that the coconut unhealthy it, again it, it's the amount overeating anything if you have one muffin a week it's not going to probably have any bad you know effect on your weight or anything but yes maybe having 10 a day would be a bad idea so coconut again what's the amount of coconut that is too much what is too much and very often the problem is that a lot of these products, the fake meat and fake cheese, whatever, they are very highly processed. So the processed food is just not the best, right? Personally, I don't eat meat. And sometimes I do eat the fake meat because just for the flavor. But I eat it maybe, I don't know, like once a year or something. So, you know, so it's not going to make me sick, but this is not how, it's not my usual diet. I, I eat a lot of eggs, for example, because um, that's a very good source of protein. And fish, I eat a lot of fish. I just don't eat meat. So, but you know, everything can be unhealthy. Probably too much fish is unhealthy too because of the mercury, but I don't know, you have to eat something. But the eggs are actually very good because we know the farm and it's a very small farm. And thank God that we have such a amazing access to these eggs and and I know um, what the chickens are fed and they have a good life there. So like, oh my God, such a blessing. Uh, current Canadian health warnings are that women should not um, have more than two drinks a week. I mean, uh, it is more likely evening dinner with wine was more dangerous than my decades of Dior and Mavala. <laughs> you know, there were such different opinions about everything. And I think... You know, um, it's you have to do what feels good for you, right? Like I, for example, I really rarely drink um, anymore. It's just I don't feel very good when I do drink. Um, but again, if that what makes you happy. But I think, I mean, again, the medication I'm on, I'm, I'm on uh, um, anti-anxiety medication, like the, you know, antidepressants and stuff. And you should not be drinking because that can give you more side effects. And for example, I've also heard that alcohol, even very moderate, even like a glass or two a day, um, is um, a depressive, right? So like it, it can cause you not to be able to deal with your stress properly. So it just depends, you know, like if... But for example, I love sweets, I love croissants, I love these things. So it just, it, it depends. It's whatever makes you happy, right? Um, where about in Spain are you? Uh, we are near Barcelona and Llorat de Mar. So are you here as well in Spain? Um, my lovely men. Yes, so we are near Barcelona and Llorat de Mar. Coconut is saturated fat, but we need saturated fat too. We need saturated fat because um, it's very good for hormone production. 
as well. So yes, too much of saturated fat is not good, but demonizing saturated fat, because you know how they used to say, oh my God, you can only have, I don't know how many eggs, uh, you know, um, a week or something like that. I eat at least two, three eggs um, a day and my cholesterol is fine. So it always has been. Yeah, I know the government's telling you how to, how much to drink. Yeah. And the thing is, if they were like really, really concerned about our health, that would be one thing. <laughs> but I really don't don't believe that that would be uh, the case. Uh, Caroline has to go. Thank you so much for joining. Have a good evening. Uh, I wouldn't touch that stuff. Uh, oh, the fake meat, probably. Moderation with any kind of processed food, no matter what it's made of. Exactly, exactly. Ah, okay, you can sometimes travel to Spain. Awesome. If your mood is low, alcohol can easily make things worse. Yeah. The next day, right? Like they say, actually... Mm, yeah, you're, you're not able to, to deal with stress after, like the next day or something. So I don't know. See how it makes you feel. Maybe, maybe everybody's different. And then the thing is too with alcohol, it's better to have alcohol during the day because at night you're not getting proper sleep. You're not falling into the proper sleep when you are, after you've been drinking. And it doesn't have to be much. Like you don't have to be drunk. But again, you know... Who knows? You have to see what works for you. Uh, did you try the new SE plant polishes? No, no, I haven't. And uh, it's kind of like this, this, the same, excuse me, the plant polishes is the same kind of trend like with the OPI. Um, what is it called? The, what is it called? The Nature Strong, things like that. Uh, when you look at the label, it's really, it's it's really um, not very transparent. So when you really look at the label, it's just how the ingredients are really described, that they are bio based or something. Like all of them, really, it's like saying, you know, vodka is made from potatoes, so it's fine to have a liter of vodka day because it's 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 from plants, right? It's like wine is from grapes. But that doesn't mean that it's harmless. And it's the same thing with, not that the polishes are harmless, but it's the same as any other polish. Because they say that, for example, the two main solvents in any other polish is about to acetate and ethyl acetate. So now they're saying that they are, and then the nitrocellulose is made from cotton. Yeah, okay, maybe, but you have to mix, it's usually wood pulp mixed with nitric acid. Like how natural and good it is it's not like it's just silly how it's just they describe the ingredients differently so they sound better but they're still the same ingredients like in the other polishes they're not any better they're not any healthier you're not eating these plant-based polishes right so in terms of the the application sometimes they might improve formulas the formulas of the nature strong are really really nice for sure um but um, when it comes to the health of the natural nails, I haven't noticed any benefit. I actually had a client, I used it on pedicures a few times and she got a lot of like yellow staining and some white spots. So it's not any better and not that the other one is worse. It's just, this is what happens when you wear a nail polish for an extended period of time. That's it. Uh, I have to go. So Rosie has to go. <laughs> much love from Canada. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks for the flower festival video. You're very welcome. So yeah, yesterday we went to this flower festival in Girona. So I posted a video on Patreon. Just very quick video. Yeah, it was really, really beautiful. So they decorated the city with flowers. It's so nice. So nice. Okay, guys. I think I should be going because it's 20 uh, to nine and they closed the grocery store at 9.30. So in reality, they closed it probably 10 after nine. 
so I still should go uh, to the grocery store to get some stuff for for dinner tonight. So I better start, you know, wrapping things up. So hopefully um, I will see you guys next week. And let me know if you have any ideas on what to do. Um, by the way, I have the new video with the new shellac colors. And I'm actually surprised that the polishes are not really swatched anywhere else. So I don't have any discount codes. I'm going to talk to the owner um, and see if, um, if, if they would be interested in giving me a discount code or anything like that. If I do uh, find anything out, I'm going to definitely post it on Patreon if you guys are interested and uh, put it under in the description box of this video. So I'll let you know. Um, okay, so uh, let me know if you have any ideas, um, yes, uh, for the next live and how, uh, what, what else would you like to see? I would be very happy to, uh, you know, do whatever I can. And yes, uh, shellac video that I just published. And I'm just actually surprised that I haven't seen anyone else watch or talk about this uh, collection. So I'm not sure if Miracle happened. And we actually got a product in Spain here ahead of everybody else. I'm not sure if that's the case or what the heck is going on, but we got the product. So let me know how you like the colors because I know that a lot of people complain that the shellac colors are boring, blah, blah, blah. So these colors are a little different. So they are on the channel. You can find them um, on the channel now, okay? Thank you so much guys for joining and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye.